Cats of TV. Hey everybody, Cats of TV, and this is part two of our look at exponential curves and functions. In part one, we generalized from elementary exponentiation to a continuous curve. We now look more formally at the function that generates it. At any given point on an exponential curve, the function is growing at a rate proportional to the value at that point. The larger the value, the faster the growth. We can express this formally with this elementary differential equation. The rate of growth, or rate of decay, is proportional to the current value by the factor k. Solving this equation yields the following function. This is a form of the exponential function we casually used in part 1, but with a very special base, the constant e. e is an irrational number, like pi, and is approximately equal to 2.71828.1828. It appears in all sorts of places in mathematics that derive from the exponential function and its inverse, the natural logarithm. If y equals e to the x, then x is the natural log of y. We can also express the exponential as this infinite Taylor series, one of the simplest. Now if we take the derivative of this series to describe the rate of change, we get the same series back. And only one function in all of mathematics has this property. Yes, e to the x. So we have seen the theory behind this very important function, but as we mentioned in part one, it also has many practical uses. We often see this in many natural phenomena, Take echoes and reverberation in rooms like this one. Echoes are created by the sound reflecting off of surfaces of the room and returning to the listener's ears. The strength and timing of the echoes are determined by a complex interplay of factors, including the structure and material of the space, as well as its contents. However, at a high level, the pattern often includes a series of early reflections, followed by more dense later reflections, with the overall sound level of successive reflections following an exponentially decaying pattern. If we switch the plot to a logarithmic scale measured in decibels, the exponential curve becomes linear. We use the time it takes for the level to drop 60 decibels as the so-called T60 of the reverberant system. Longer T60s mean longer reverberation. We also observe exponential behavior in delay effects processors like our Strymon Magneto. The time and repeats parameters change the rate of the exponential decay. Looking at the recording in Pro Tools, we can see the differing exponential rates. We see a similar pattern in radioactive decay. Radioactivity arises when the nucleus of an atom emits part of its structure as radiation, decaying into a new nucleus and element. There is no particular pattern to when such a decay action happens in a particular atom, but over a large number of atoms, an exponential pattern occurs, where a fixed proportion of the remaining element will have transmuted in a specific period of time called the mean life. The longer the mean life, the longer it takes for the element to decay. In this way, it is roughly analogous to the T60 measure in reverberation. If we normalize the mean time with the natural logarithm of 2, we get the so-called half-life, which is often what is discussed in practice. One common example is carbon-14, whose half-life is about 5,700 years and is a convenient tool for measuring the age of biological materials and human artifacts. And then there is population growth and the spread of infectious diseases. In the absence of inhibiting factors, the growth of a population is proportional to the current population and follows an exponential curve. This is also true of infectious agents like viruses. Now, of course, there are inhibiting factors. For one, there is an upper limit to the number of organisms a virus can infect. We take this into account by modifying the original differential equation to include an additional factor for the carrying capacity of the system. The solution will no longer be an exponential curve, but instead a logistic curve. The logistic curve grows quite rapidly at first, but then slows as it approaches the carrying capacity. This can be used as a very simplified, even crude model for overall infections. Here we draw the curve for different rates of growth. The higher the growth rate, the faster it approaches the maximum, but the real importance is revealed when we take the derivative. Here we see the derivative of the function. This is roughly analogous to daily new infections. Now if we plot the derivative for different rates, we see that higher rates produce steep spikes, while lower rates produce shallower spikes but longer periods of infection. The problem with steep spikes is that they can outstrip treatment resources, as we have been seeing in the current pandemic. This is why mitigation measures that lower the rate parameter, such as social distancing and closing of public facilities, are so important. This is the flattening of the curve that public health experts often emphasize. And while the logistic curve is a simplified model, it demonstrates the fundamentals of the reasoning. 
In our next installment, we will explore what happens when we move beyond real numbers and apply exponential and logistic functions to complex numbers. So please return for that, and as always, please let us know if you have any questions about anything we covered in today's video. Thanks for watching. Check out more at www.catsynth.com and please subscribe to CatSynth TV.